So what I'm doing here is obviously I'm adding an in-ground junction box called a handhole. You can't just bury junction boxes in the earth. Uh, but here what we're doing is we're using a handhole. This is it right here. This side will sit like this. It's marked electric. This lot, uh, this screw right here actually keeps it um, uh, physically attached so it doesn't come down. These are not holes. These are just so you can open up the box, I believe. Uh, so once we set it inside this hole here, we will backfill it even on the inside with pea gravel. So should water get in there, uh, it'll be able to drain back into the earth. I'm using my M18 SDS Max here with a shovel bit on the end of it to loosen up the soil so that I can move it out of the way with the shovel. It's a very useful tool, the SDS Max. Okay, so I didn't get a chance to record last week when I was here, but this is an old house in Westfield in an old part of the town, uh, near the center of town. I believe this house was built in 1910. So most of the framing is open and the new buyers of the house um, hired me to do some stuff here out here in the garage, update the garage a little bit. Uh, right now, as you can see, we have garage doors in place, but the garage door openers are not in place. So I was here running circuitry on the inside of this garage uh, for the receptacle for the, for the garage door opener and one on each bay. I was told 10 feet back and a foot off center. And so as you can see, I'm right there. And then for this other bay, same thing, 10 feet back and off center, I'm right there. And we also added these two RAB LED wraparound light fixtures. So I'm reusing the existing feed that comes out here. So I'm assuming it's just a 20 amp feed, but the trouble was um, the depth of the, of, the, of the UF wire was actually shown. As you can see, it comes into the garage like that, and that's just not very safe, is it? And it looks like a sprinkler system hose there to protect it a little bit, so that's not right. So what we're doing is we're gonna add this hand hole box inside of here, extend the circuit. We're gonna run PVC up to about here or so, and then on the inside, we'll come up and we'll attach the existing feed from the handhole to this box that I put in here. Uh, inside this box, we're gonna have an occupancy sensor so the light automatically turns on should you come out here. Uh, as you can see, I bent some half inch EMT up to a junction box there. And then there's two pieces of MC cable. One of them is for the set of lights that's gonna be controlled by the switch and the receptacles will have constant power. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my, my PVC heater there and I'm gonna warm up the stick of three quarter inch PVC and just get my 90 degree bend in now um, before I disconnect this wire and put it into the hand hole. Okay, so now my heater's been heating for a little while. I'm gonna try to get my 90 bend here. lighting level here for you to be able to see what I'm doing is just plain awful and I apologize for that but what I'm doing here is I'm disconnecting the live feed that you saw on the outside of the garage which leads up into this box and this box has a switch for one overhead light and one receptacle and then it carries on to the back of the garage and has another receptacle it was later uh, rewired and connected to the new circuitry It really took a lot of effort to make this cutout large enough for the handhole to fit in there. And of course, I got to be careful not to damage that cable that's there, the UF cable. 
eventually I was able to make it fit as you can see here and what we're going to do is we're going to put that UF wire inside the handhole and then we're going to run a piece of PVC into the handhole as well and join them together. Now when you're backfilling this, um, what ends up happening over time is that the handhole cover gets covered over and you know nobody knows it's there. Not much I can do about that, but it is supposed to be accessible. So I do put it like an inch below the earth and then you can grow grass over it. The point is that you know that it's there uh, should you need to access it. I'm using three quarter inch PVC. It's pretty standard. I don't like using half inch PVC because the spacing inside the conduit only leaves room for a few conductors should we add some. Not that I'm gonna add any here, but I really don't stock any half inch PVC. Everything I do mostly for something like this is gonna be in three quarter inch PVC and that's what I'm set up for. So when you make the hole for the conduit fitting through the framing here or through the outer sheathing here, just wanna make that hole a little bit larger than it needs to be just so you have a little bit of wiggle room with the fittings here. Uh, I've learned that that makes the job a lot easier. Um, you wanna make it just large enough to fit the conduit in, but not too large. I'm just using here um, number 12 THHN, THWN. So these conductors, because they're outdoors, they have to have the rating to be used outdoors in a wet location. Anything outdoors is a wet location. So the W on the insulation of THHN backslash THWN allows me to use the stranded conductors number 12 THHWN here um, to meet the bare minimum code. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull these conductors from the handhole up to my switch box and then make the connections. I find it easier to make all my device attachments to the 4-inch cover plate before I attach them to the branch circuit conductors. It just seems to be easier this way. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm installing a Lutron occupancy sensor that will automatically turn the lights on when you walk into the garage or when you drive your car into the garage. So the lights will turn on automatically and then turn off automatically as well. Obviously, I'm just extending the circuit here. So black to black, white to white, and green to green. And of course, the key detail here is being that this is a wet location, even though I don't anticipate water getting into the handhole, 
I have to use these WeatherTight uh, wire connectors that you see up at the top. They're in blue, and that's what I used here to um, make my wire nut connection here. So the lights are controlled by the motion sensor, and then of course the receptacles are on all the time. So whether you're coming in to park your car or just walk into the garage, the lights will turn on. And of course the garage door opener receptacles are alive 100% of the time. This was a really, really nice job. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And here's the test. Obviously the light goes on when it sees me. I have them turn on and then turn off after five minutes if there's no motion detected. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you got anything useful out of it or you like this kind of content, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Hi, this is Ron from Classic Electric. YouTube thinks that you'll like these two videos on the screen, so go ahead and check them out. Don't forget to leave a comment, like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.